rings. Yep. We're going to show you guys how to do uh, some kind of checkerboard patterns. Yep. Um, even a little bit beyond that, we're going to show you not just with cork, but you can also in incorporate EVA yeah. with cork. I pulled the, uh, the EVA that we've got downstairs and something that if you don't want to get super fancy with it, but you want to do a little a little custom touches there. Uh, I'll show you kind of the easy, easy way there, just to add, just to add something. Yeah. So spice it up a little bit. Yeah. We'll show you how to tie all those together, and obviously we'll show how to cut the cork. We'll do a little start to finish, all the tools necessary yep. to make it happen. Um, cut the little cork pieces into um, into little slices or pies. Sure. And then um, basically deconstruct the cork rings and then construct them back together. Depending seems, on the pattern that you want. Seems easy enough, yeah. right? It's not, not too bad at all. And then, of course, we've got uh, the little slicer there that, that brings a regular cork ring, whether you have a half inch width mm -hmm. or, and when I'm talking width, I'm talking like this. If you're talking a half inch or you're talking the quarter inch, brings it down even more. Yeah. So, depending on what you want to do, um, you know, kind of block in some areas, if you want some thinner rings, if you want, you know, whatever. It's great. Now, some we're forgetting though. It's still daylight outside. Oh yeah. We can see the lake. I'm talking daylight savings. That happened, what, this past weekend? This it's past weekend, yep. my favorite day of the mm -hmm. year because it gets us back to where we can fish after work. We can play golf after work. Yeah. We can see driving home. It's just <laughs> fantastic. It, it really is. Yeah. So, you know, for those that don't like it, I'm sorry. But for yeah. those that like to do stuff after work like us, I love it. First few days were brutal, I'll say. You know, that extra hour. You don't think it's a lot, but it, it can, uh, you know. Can be. If you're used to giving up a little bit early, it makes it a little tougher. But it's worth it. Always. I'll say it. It's, first few days are tough, but after that, it's, it's definitely worth it. And like you said, it gives a little time in the afternoon after work to... Go do a couple fun things. So. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So we're going to have some giveaways. Yep, giveaways. We we're got gonna... a new product to show. Yeah. And uh, we got some updates on the photo contest. Too. Ooh, that's right. It uh, it's just so happened to be uh, finalist time. Yep. We'll talk about that uh, a little later in the show. We'll show that. We'll announce the finalists. Um, of course, you know, the giveaways. We're gonna, giving away some uh, Cork and Lake Creation Kit. We're going to do... Uh, the ultimate cork inlay creation kit. And then we're gonna do something a little different that we've never done before. We are going to do a CRV Fly multi-option kit, but we are going to finish out a custom cork handle and we're gonna throw that into the kit. Awesome. So that'll be something that, you know, a lot of the custom handles that we've done here on the show for cork and stuff, you know, they end up on a fly rod. Yeah. You know, you don't always have to, but we haven't given away that, that CRB fly rod. Uh, we've, a couple guys been asking about it in the group. It's gotten some really nice reviews. So we figured, hey, we're going to do a custom cork handle and let's throw it in there. So that way we take something from the show and we send it out, uh, you know, to the winner. Absolutely. So, Great idea. Yeah, absolutely. So. I think that is about it for the pre-show. We ready to get this thing going? Let's do it. Guys, Jay, Nick, you guys ready to rock this thing? All right, let's do it. Episode 69, let's hit it. There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. <laughs> We are back. And yes, this is episode 69. I cannot believe that we've been doing it for this long. What is it? I think June, June 1st or June 4th or something. That's our anniversary. So we're probably about halfway there. Yeah. To, I mean, you know, from the start of the year through there. So that'll right. be five years. Whew. 
Wow. Well, All right. So <clears throat> let's talk about the photo contest. Okay. Because that is something that is going on in the Mud Hole Live Ride Builders Workshop, which is now 14,000 members strong, I believe. Still growing. Cool. And uh, we've got hashtag build two, the number two win. That's how you put it in there. And we did custom handles photo contest. And here we are tonight talking about custom handles. All right. So we are going to announce the finalists. That's right. Right, guys? We're going to announce the finalists. And the voting, as before, it will go in the group. Uh, the voting is going to end on March 23rd. That's a, at midnight. Uh, the winners will be announced the next day. And then uh, top three finalists, you know, will go up. Talk about that. Mudhole Live Rob Builders Workshop. That's where you vote on your favorite. So that's how this whole thing will go. So I believe, do we have a, uh, do we have a video here? We're going to announce that. Jay, you want to go ahead and run that if you're ready to rock? I don't know about you. Those are pretty impressive. Those are pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, all three. So congratulations to the top three finalists. Again, you guys have until March uh, 23rd at midnight to vote on those. Yep. To decide the winner. Those are those are pretty solid. I mean, Very cool. the names are good. Yeah. Everything you put in there was good. Uh, just wow. Just really, really showing out. I love that. So congratulations to those finalists. And of course, for everybody that entered. Uh, you know, after after the voting ends on this one, we're gonna we're gonna kick off another one. That's how we roll with this thing. So, uh, for those that are not members of the Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop, you're missing out. You're missing out on, you know, sneak peeks of stuff. You're missing out on deals. You're missing out on a great community and of course giveaways where you can win free money. Yep. You got it. So, all right, go. Cool. All right, let's move on to. We got a seat. We have a new saltwater aluminum real seat. Yep. yep. So I don't know if you guys can, can we get a zoom right there? Or do I need to pick the pick one of these up? Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, we got it. Perfect. Here we go. We got them lined up you. there. So this is our new ARC, A-R-C, saltwater okay. aluminum seat. All right. Um, we got our, our base, you know, five colors up here. We have our silver, gold, black and gold, gun smoke. Um, we're actually missing the black one. I'm not sure where that one went off to. Oh, I actually was, yeah. I was writing about it ah, on the internet okay. today, taking some measurements, looking at it. All good. And it must still be at my desk. So we have six colors. <laughs> <laughs> Missing yeah. one on the table here. Um, but this is a great seat. It's kind of a hybrid between our comfort lock real seat yep. um, and like our heavy duty ALHD real seat. Yeah. So it's got the cool ergonomic shape to it. Very easy to hold in your hands. Yeah. And um, the double locking nut feature. I mean, you know, you put a reel in there, it's not gonna move. Yep, this is a, these are 12 sided knurled locking nuts and they have Delrin inserts in them. So when you lock them down, they stay locked. Uh, they are also a tri-channel here. So it's three sided. When this slides up and down, you don't have to spin this hood around looking you know for where it fits into the real seat um, and it's it's very secure it's lightweight like you said ergonomic double locking nuts everything you want in a saltwater seat uh, it's pretty sharp and then of course the colors yeah absolutely so we oh, got look, those oh the, special delivery yeah exactly and there it is there it is there's the box cool perfect so there it is now yeah i i really like them i mean lightweight they look good I like the double locking nut. Fits a number of different seats we put in them here yeah. at the shop. So, yeah. 
I don't, I don't see why you can go wrong with any of those. Yep, absolutely. It's a good, um, a good bridge between those two real seats. If you've used like the ACLR real seat before, the comfort lock seat, okay. you know it's great on you know, your, your smaller, or not, not smaller, but your lighter uh, saltwater applications. Yep. Um, the ALHD is for your heavier you know, tuna rods and that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. This is a great kind of in-between. Kind of it's, it's got features of, of both. Of both. So. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. New right. product showcase. Yeah. Why not? All right. All right. We're going to talk about this now? Let's do it. Let's talk about cork. What, talk about what cork. is cork? So cork is um, it's a natural material, yep. right? Most of it's going to come out of Portugal. Okay. Um, you guys probably wonder why it has all these little defects and imperfections. Well, again, it's a natural product. Mm -hmm. This isn't something that's synthetically made or processed to yep. be absolutely perfect. It's just, um, it's not made that way. So it's actually grown on trees. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's, it goes through a process to where it's actually, the bark is, you know, either cut or peeled off the tree. Yep. Right. And then it goes through its process of being cleaned and graded, um, you know, a lot of the, the better cork rings actually go to the wine, you know, companies. So yeah. that's, uh, that's something that, you know, the rod building industry has struggled with for years and years is for sure. getting quality cork at a decent price, you know, because it's very expensive to get the, the higher quality of cork that doesn't have the imperfections in the pits and the holes and, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of stuff. For so, sure. Um, and of course, there's all different kinds of colors of cork. You have um, obviously the natural color. We also have some that are that are dyed different colors, like our yeah. our blue, our red. What else we got up there? So you know that, as you were saying too, you know they they take cork that doesn't meet you know standards of mm -hmm. being perfectly just natural rings that they punch out, right? Yeah. So this is your natural ring, like you said, and then they take it and now they grind it up. They create composite cork out of it. They add mm -hmm. some rubber to it. Um, you know, they now have uh, burled cork. Like you said, there's dyed colors. Um, there is all kinds of stuff. And it's really just based on the fact that they have cork that's not as high grade as they would like. So they're able to do other things with it that not only could be a feature, like a composite cork that you can use it's a little tougher, you use it on butt caps, you yeah. use it in, in different different uh, applications that maybe regular cork is too delicate in. Yeah. Um, so you can use it like that. And then of course, for all kinds of decorative stuff, whether they have the burnt rings, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then as you said, red, green, blue, um, all different kinds of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it is pretty interesting that, you know, a number, number of people out there don't realize that it is pulled from a tree, that they don't kill the tree and they don't cut it down. Yeah. So what is it, every nine years or so? It takes a long time to grow, hence why it's um, expensive yeah. and, and why it's hard to find quality cork sometimes is because yep. it's not something that has a turnover over of you know uh, multiple times a year. It's right. a long process to grow cork. Exactly, so. but it is nice that they don't have to kill a tree. You know, They say somewhere between 150 and 200 years on a lifespan of a cork tree. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's very interesting how it, you know, has come about and worked its way into the fishing world. So that's pretty much it. That's what cork is. That's where it comes from. And let's talk about what we're going to use tonight. Yeah. On so put this together. Yeah. So the tools involved, I'm going to actually move these real there seats I'll out of our way. In the back. That, thank you. Yep. One more. All right, so the tools that we need to actually uh, make our custom cork handles. Um, so a few of the equipment options needed. Um, and I think we might have a quick video on that. Jay, you wanna run that real quick? And I'll talk over it. So obviously the, the big piece of equipment we need to get um, for the, the finished result to turn your handle is, um, is something like our RBS Pro Kit um, dash HT, the, her, the handle turning. That's going to have your RBS Pro, it's going to have mandrels, epoxy, all the heavy duty equipment needed yep. to actually turn the cork grip itself. Now for our, um, for the cutting of the cork, the uh, MHCJ dash ultimate, the cork creation, the ultimate kit, which we have our jigs and our cork rings and all that good stuff. 
Um, also our handle clamp, that's gonna come in towards a little bit of the end of the process to actually each individual cork ring, glue those together and keep those in place, right? Exactly. And of course, we gotta have our face shield when we're turning the handle to make sure the dust and the particles don't get it in our face and yeah. safety first, right? Always, then teamwork, yeah. that's how it goes. Perfect, so that's it. That's what you need to turn custom cork handles. So, on our table up here, you'll see we've got, I'm gonna scoot these over just a little bit. Yeah. We have our, our four aluminum cork jigs, which come in a variety. I'm gonna try to hold up. Here's three of them at least. So you'll see these come in different patterns, right? So you can cut um, smaller pie shapes with the one here. Um, and you know, this one has a little bit larger grooves to cut the, the bigger pie shapes. And of course, this one you can do um, not only the pie shapes, but you can also cut these, you know, vertically, and even one that cuts to the side. Mm -hmm. And the last one, the one that you mentioned earlier, this one is actually going to cut your rings um, horizontally. Yep. So you can take, you know, your your cork ring like this, slide it in there, and it's actually going to cut slices. Yep. I use this one a lot um, when I'm building fly reel or fly handles and things like that. Uh, to add in sometimes some, some rubberized cork around the reel seat or, uh, you know, some thinner rings that, you know, they don't take away from the, the good clean cork that I try to use in a fly yeah. handle, but it just adds a little bit to it. So this one, if you're not wanting to get super fancy, I do like, I do like the slicer. I do too. I, I like, you know, checkerboard is, is really cool, can be a little more time consuming, but just doing the, using the slicer alone and doing, you know, um, slices like this of the cork ring yep. and putting just accent rings. Yeah, so it would kind of turn like that. Yeah. Yeah, so you would be able to take a regular cork ring and then add slices on the outside. Now, this is a cork ring that you can buy already like this at mudhole.com. Uh, it's got, you know, the burnt on the outside, so it already gives you that kind of look, but that thin outside rings there that's what you'll create when you use you know that slicer like that so yeah. that's what i do sometimes i'm using composite or, or something else um, and of course i've got you know a little treat i'll show you later that uh, we had some eva mixed in there cool. so all right so we have our cork jigs um, one of the other tools that you basically have to have is our crb saw um, if you get the uh, the package deal it's going to come with the saw frame plus the blade itself. Now again, if you get the, um, the ultimate core mm -hmm. creation kit, this all comes together. You get yeah. everything in one package. It's and a great deal. I think deal. you get, don't you get like an eight or a 10 pack or a 12 pack of blades, I think with I it. think so, yeah. yeah. Enough to last a oh, long, long, time. long time. Yeah, yep. yeah, because the, you know, the blades are very thin. Um, I want to say that it's very similar to like a jeweler saw. Right. Um, but of course, you know, we're using them to cut cork and, and EVA and, and all that stuff. So um, you do get a number of blades with it, and that way, you know, it'll keep you going, and you honestly can use them for, for a while. Yep. So. And a couple other things just real quick. We'll get into this later, but um, our zip ties, got to have these. Yep. Um, I've got a, a foil dish you out here. That? Okay, yeah. Um, I've got a little disposable brush that okay. we'll use to glue with. Um, my red handle pick, which I'll use to kind of, um, it's easier to pick up the little pie pieces, you mm -hmm. know. Um, obviously, we got our wood glue, and um, that's going to be it just starting out. Perfect. So, I'm going to go ahead and take, um, most of these cork jigs will come with a little piece, a little washer, I guess you could call it. Okay. That goes inside of the jig itself. Now, that helps you if you get a cork ring some will fit inside perfectly, like this one fits inside, and I can just turn it over and pop it out, no big deal. Okay. Some are a little bit tougher um, if the outside diameter is a little bit thicker. Sometimes they'll kind of stick in here. Mm -hmm. So what that washer allows you to do is each jig has a hole at the bottom, so you can come in with like a pick or something and it just kind of makes it easier to push it out. Gotcha. Right? Okay. So I'm going to put my washer in there. Um, I'm going to take just a, a normal cork ring. Um, I'm going to pop it in there. Now, for this one, I'm using, this is the MHCJ-2A. So it's kind of the, 
I guess the the broader um, cuts with this okay. one. Um, you know, the the pattern is really up to you. You know, you can get really really small pies um, yeah. or, or pies or chunks or whatever you want to call them. Yep. So the smaller you cut these little pie shapes, obviously the the smaller they're going to be and the more you know defined your checkerboard pattern is. Yeah, it'll be the how many color changes you want in a ring. Yeah. Um, so for this 2, 2A, the MHCJ-2A, this is more of a broader pattern. So your, your little pie shapes are going to be much larger than this. Um, this one was probably used with the Dash 3 version. So these are like 16th inch or 16th pies, I guess you could call them. Okay. Or, or sections, little cuts. All right. Um, but for this example, I'm going to use the 2A, which has a little bit wider uh, yeah. pie shapes. Sounds and, good. And um, we'll just do these in, I'm going to do four cuts. Um, actually, let's just do two. We'll do two cuts. All I'm right. going to do two cuts, which is going to make us uh, four little wedges. Okay? Perfect. So I come in with my saw. And this type of just the natural cork cuts really easy. You know, if you use the rubberized or the burl type cork. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit tougher material and can be harder to cut. But and they actually did ask, uh, Timothy's got a question, is composite cork the same as rubberized cork? Uh, it is, that's, that's what I call it. And that would be <clears throat> this piece here. Uh, this is going to be your composite slash rubberized. That's you know going to be cork and you know, rubber, it, it does have a little, it's thicker, it's heavier. I'm sorry, the cork ring is still the same size. It's, it's not thicker, but there is more rubber in this than cork. So you can see it in there and it, and it is, it's tougher, it is heavier, and it's, it's great for, you know, in caps, butt caps, yep. different things like that. So rubberized composite, it's really kind of the same thing. You do see some that have more cork than rubber, ones that you know have more rubber than cork it it just depends on on what you get yeah so some manufacturers have it different but that's that's what that is yep so i made one cut so far and then all i'm going to do is basically turn it and i'm going to make this cork ring into four little wedge pieces just real quick like that again you can cut this on every single line that's in this cork jig. All you're gonna do is make those wedges smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. It all depends on what pattern you wanna achieve. Right. For our live episode, I'm gonna go with just two cuts yeah. to make it quicker. And let's see if we cut all the way through. I'm gonna flip it over. And it didn't go all the way through, but you can see there's just a little portion left. So instead of just breaking that, I'm just going to come in with my saw and cut them flush. Same thing here. I think that was just because you were cutting it on the table, really. Probably was, yeah. You were running into the edges. But otherwise, if you were otherwise holding, it would have went through. If you were holding it and cutting it, it's hard for Nick to see. So. So we've got four little chunks of our natural cork. Now I'm gonna come in with, I would say what this is like a darker burl cork. Yeah, and that I think is when they talk about uh, in the part numbers, that's gonna be a burnt, burnt okay. cork, but it is, it's more of a burl type pattern. It's, it's, not, it's not natural cork ring that's just burnt. Yeah. So it does, you can see the little pieces and parts all kind of together in it and then burnt. So that was actually one of the questions that said, uh, are the darker rings a natural product or are they composite? These burnt rings are still a natural product. The ones that are like this, that are composite, have rubber in them. And I know it is a little bit harder to see, but you, know, you, can, kinda, you can kinda see there. So this yeah. one here is the composite and the one that Hunter is holding is the burnt cork. The big 
difference between those two are, to me, is the weight. Oh and of course, gosh, the yeah. durability too, like you mentioned right. earlier. But exactly. if you had those two cork rings in your hand, you would definitely be able to tell which one is the rubberized and which one is the oh, absolutely is the uh, still the natural. I mean, I, I would venture to say that the the composite or rubberized one weighs what five or six. I mean, yeah, that's four rings there. It it, it weighs more than that. Yeah. So. All right. So for this ring, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna make a cut this way. Again, that table, I'm gonna move back to here. Sometimes you have to go to the edge of the table because the way this saw is, it's really hard to saw and go all the way down to the bottom. But if you move it to the edge of the table, a little more room to work with. Now we're talking. And I think that should get it. There we go. Michael's got a question on grading cork while you're doing that. Uh, Michael, it really depends on where you buy it from, who's grading it. Um, you're going to see stuff that is 2A, 3A, 4A. Uh, they talk even about floor grade cork, F-L-O-R. Uh, you don't get to see that very much anymore, honestly. Uh, but Michael, that's going to be uh, something that the cork grades are going to be based on, you know, how many imperfections are in it, how many voids are in it. Um, there's a couple articles out there floating around on who grades them, how they're graded. You know, it, it can be a little, um, you know, opinion based, based on who's doing the grading. Um, but for all in all, you know, if you were to get 4A cork from a number of different manufacturers, you're going to be very, very similar. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how it's graded most of the time. Cool. And just to show you guys um, this one more time, again, for tonight's show, I'm just doing a very basic, um, you know, design for this one. So I've made a cut this way, this way right here. And then I just turned it and did a cut this way. So I've turned my cork ring into four, four, you know, sections. Yep. That's all I've done. So let's pop this one out. And it did the same thing to me. Okay, got that one. That one. And my final piece. Go. Okay. Now, again, if you were doing a very intricate pattern, you know, pretty large size checkerboard, you would need to do this for, you know, maybe 10, 12 rings, yep. somewhere in that range, depending yep. on your pattern. Yeah, but the more rings you do, full rings, the, the taller it's going to be. So, you know, you have the difference between this one and the difference of this one. So you can see we did a height difference there. This is just really, it's two rings and then we cut it thinner. So then this one is probably, I don't know. It's, it's still two rings per material, but you're gonna be using probably four rings on the taller one. Uh, and, you know, just a couple here. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Cool. So now I've laid out um, my two, uh, two new rings that, that uh, have the design I'm going for. Yep. And basically I'm just, you know, um, what's the word I'm going for? I'm just alternating my yeah. um, type of cork that I'm using. Right. So instead of one, you know, full section of just normal cork, like that, right? See that? Or like that. That's probably a little better. Yeah, there you go. Right? So now I've got these sections and basically what the design I'm going for is going to be like this. Very simple. So to get that, we're going to need, we're going to bring in our glue, our foil dish. I've got my zip ties. 
my disposable brush, and my pick. So get my zip tie ready first of all. So what I do with the zip tie is, obviously you want to, the, the end result is gonna be something like this. Get that, is that good right there? Yeah. So this piece is already dried. Um, we have glue that's in between each of our pieces and the zip tie is what, you know, basically held it together to keep it shaped. Yep. So that's our, that's what we're going for. That's the end result. So what we do is I'm going to take a little bit of our wood glue here and pour it into our foil dish. It does not take much at all. Just a little bit into our cup. Just a little bit, that's all you need. And for each piece, now you can use your hands, obviously, you know, if you wanted to hold it like this, but what we're trying to achieve is glue on each side of this cork ring. So I'm gonna take my brush, and apply it to one side, and then same thing on the other side. And again, you can use your, your fingers if you want to, or you can also take your pick and just lightly kind of press into the cork and hold it that way too. Nice. Just depends on you know, which method you want to go for. You can also use like a little thumbtack, uh, push pin, you know, whatever's, whatever you for got sure. around the house. Yep. So from there, you can either, you can hold it in the air like this. Sometimes it even helps if you kind of put it on a table where you're able to press against it from the top. And so you're going to take, um, we're going to take our, our burnt cork and just kind of push that edge together. And then I'm going to add a little bit of extra glue to this side. Is that a good angle there? Yeah. yeah. And same thing on this side, I'm just going to press that together so it has a good bond. And then our last piece, I'm going to take my pick out for just a second. My last piece, I'm going to kind of do the same as I did to the first piece. I'm going to apply glue to both sides. And it really doesn't take too much just enough to pretty much coat that entire edge. Yeah. I try not to put too much in the middle. Um, if anything, you kind of want to have maybe a little bit at the top or the sides. And yeah, because technically you're going to be sliding this on a mandrel if you're going to be turning. So if you yep. can keep it out of the center, that would be ideal. So, and again, I come in with my pick to just kind of hold it. And I'm also pressing down just a little bit so that it kind of just stabilizes the ring itself. And I'm gonna take that last piece and just kind of push it, push it in there together. And now I've got all four and add a little bit of pressure. And, oh, don't do that. And luckily it stayed together, all good. And then our zip tie. So what a little trick for this is now, obviously you could come in and, and try to do this little move, you know, but if you just want to do it the proper way, just kind of get an idea of the, the diameter of the cork ring. And once you're really close, just slide it over. And I go a little bit at a time. You really don't want to wrench on this because that glue holds it together, but it doesn't mean that it's completely glued yet, right? right. So it can still kind of move around. Yeah, and if you go to wrench on it, it like you'll slide one piece out a little. Yep, it'll exactly. Get, it'll kind of, it won't maintain its round shape. And I'll just go a few clicks at a time until it kind of locks in place. And another trick that you can do too is actually take a, a quarter inch mandrel because the goal here is to Try to keep, um, try to keep this this inside hole um, 
to obviously be uniform. You don't want one piece to be sticking too far left and it kind of closes that gap. And, you know, because this ring is gonna go along with the rest of our handle, you know, 10, 12 rings, however many it is, it's gonna go onto a mandrel at some point so we can turn it down. So we wanna make sure this hole is uniform. So to do that, I'm actually gonna put it onto a mandrel Just like that. And then I'll just reposition again and make sure my little wedge shapes are, are kind of, they fit together nicely. I have all the edges straight. And then I'll do one final couple of clicks. Nice. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. And I'm not really worried about um, if you have the mandrel that's already treated, that's great. It doesn't have to have mandrel wax applied to it. The glue that we use is just a regular wood glue, and there's really not enough that you're using on these cork rings to make it stick to the mandrel. So or you shouldn't be. Shouldn't be at least. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a requirement to have this mandrel wax before or prep before. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously you'd go through and do this two, three, four times, however many, depending on your pattern. And as you go, you can just kind of slide this down. Then you can add the next one and the next one and you know so forth just like that um, and then let this you know sit overnight let them cure and then once they're done you can pop them off hopefully this does, doesn't come apart <laughs> yeah. and then you're left with all of these these little guys and they're all hopefully glued together just right and of course you will have a little bit of excess glue in some spots but you got a little trick for that yep so once you have all these, I can pretty much go ahead and get any scissors. Yeah. Right here. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and clip all these little guys. I think that'll cut it because I got this too. Ah, nope. You're right. The big dogs. It's even a little bit of a challenge too. Yeah. I'll be able to work it out of there. Slide it. Yeah. Boom. Sweet. So one. So this one is composite and natural cork. Yeah, so these are a mix of a little little different okay. different materials. Yep. I think I did this one. This one's a little sloppier than yours. Nope. Watch out now. Yeah. I think the best thing probably to do that was is probably a razor blade. Yeah. But you know the the old titaniums. The titaniums are doing the job. That's it. Mm. Now the good news is, if you were to bust one of these open, if maybe you didn't get enough glue onto one of those wedges and, and one side came off or something, you're going to be stacking them and gluing them. Yes. So technically, you're still going to be okay. So don't freak out if maybe one of them is a little misaligned and it breaks. Because even if it does, when you get it down onto the mandrel and you get them stacked like this, let's say one of these is, is you know, broke or something, you could still put it in the clamp. Mm -hmm. And even if it wants to try to separate a little, just come back in with a zip tie <clears throat> and go around it. Yep. So you're still able to, you know, rescue the mission Definitely. per se. So it don't have to be, don't freak out. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. No. You know, obviously your goal is to try to get them yeah. as good as you can. Right. But if you happen to have one that's like, I don't know, if you, maybe you can get that. Mm -hmm. You get a close up on this real quick. It's kind of hard to tell. I have to get the angle just perfect, but. So this one has, um, oh, uh, it's going to be tight. really hard to tell. Ah, oh, that's pretty almost. good. Almost. Yeah, kind of a little see. bit of a wobble there, and you can see whoever did that one, Hunter. I don't know, man. Yeah, I'll take credit. Yeah, you can <laughs> see the, the edges are, they're just not uniform. They're not straight across the top. Yeah. But that's not. Necessarily. Not yeah, don't throw it away. You can still use it. Yeah. You just got to do a little bit of extra work when it comes to the sanding and the prep and yep. stuff like that. Absolutely. So for these, 
we need to hit these with a little bit of sandpaper because we have we have some excess glue and um, and again if you have these little ridges where your pieces do not you know made up exactly this is the step where you can kind of fix that for the most part yeah so this is what we got here just that's 80 just 80 okay so you can take these especially the ones that have the glue you know you can take those and just just kind of hit each side real quick and you can see I mean it it doesn't take much at all so you're kind of taking that glue off the top and you're also just kind of evening out the pieces themselves yep and just a couple swipes on each side and then obviously if you have the ones with the rubberized uh, cork is yeah. <laughs> you can tell it's It'll take a little more it, elbow it's grease. It's a little to do more, it. but it doesn't take it doesn't take too long. But this little step can help in the long run. It can save you a lot of time when you're trying to to fit that final, um, you know, get the final grip shape together, right? And put all those rings together for sure. But those turned out pretty good. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, I definitely did that one. That one was. <laughs> yeah. We'll throw that one away. You did that one all right, boy. Cool. But that's it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks for watching. No. <laughs> all right. So what do you want to do next? What are, what are we going to talk about now? Or do you want to cut these? Do you want to, what's your, what's your. Uh, let's see. Let's see. You want to give something away? Let's give something away. I, I think it's time say, for a giveaway. Let's do a... That credit card's been paid off for, for a couple weeks now, so you better get on it. Barely, yeah. Um, let's do a cork inlay creation kit. Okay. Um, so that's going to be... That's going to be... What? I don't... It's John... John Lowe's? <laughs> that's a tough one from Facebook. John... John Lowe's? John Laws? I think they were, uh, somebody in the group last week or whatever was talking about, he was thinking that we don't pick his name because uh, it's, it's too hard to pronounce, and I assured him. That's incorrect. <laughs> that, that wasn't the case. So they're always trying to get us. So congratulations, John. Yeah, John. The Cork Inlay Creation Kit. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, so I had done one or two of these, and I had actually used Pro Paste. Because you can act, you can do that. Yeah, definitely. Since my step is probably the next step, I didn't want to. All right, so let's talk about building this thing. So, if you want to do thinner rings, thinner slices, you're going to need to get this cork jig out. So this is the slicer here. It is MHCJ2B. That is the part number. Again, this is one that I use a lot uh, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm messing with cork, EVA, anything like that. So it has a little screw lock down here. Talk about this here real quick. So this is actually a little Allen keyed screw. It has some knurling on the outside. You can hand tighten it. You don't need to go crazy with that. It doesn't need to be super tight all the time. With normal cork rings, you can just pop it right in, right? What happens with these cork rings, and there's little, there's little feet here that always keep it lined up for when you put it in like that, right? So what happens with these pie shapes? The pie shapes, they're very difficult to get back perfectly round. Mm. It's, just, it's just part of it, right? So when there's a little bit of like an oblong, sometimes it's hard to get it to go down into this. So what you can do is you pull the top section off, right? So this is off. Now the cork is held in place because there is a little lip in the bottom here. So now it's sitting in the bottom of this slicer, right? There you have that. And then the top piece comes on here. And sometimes it fits right on. Sometimes there's like a little piece 
or a little hangover that you got to take and slice off. But we've got that one in there and we're just going to hand tighten this back down. What that does is that just aligns the seam here that you can see. And of course, the saw is going to slide right through there. So I'm going to show you guys real quick. I like to put and hold it like this and then I'm going to cut it this way here so you can see how I'm holding it. I use my thumb to put pressure on the cork ring just so that it's held snugly and then I'm cutting it without it kind of walking all over. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so as Hunter showed earlier, this one I actually, you know, to put it on the table is tough, so I actually hold it like that. And then we're going to slide it in to the slot. Okay, so now we're in the slicer. And we're just going to work it back and forth. Try not to put a crazy amount of pressure on this blade because the blade is very, very thin uh, and it does an extremely good job of cutting, but you can put enough pressure on this to pop the blade, okay? So now you notice sometimes after you get it cut, it's hard to get the blade out. So just walk it around like this and it'll find the slot that it cut and it'll work its way back out. So what we'll do too is we will pull the little thumb screw out and then now you see there we've got this piece here is the, the slice that's the thin piece and then this is the leftover. So what we're going to do is, let's see, let me see that pick, please. So again, as Hunter said, you can come into the back of this. And you can pop that out. And then now you'll see we're left with a slice of the cork ring. And then what we can do is we will take, do the same step again. <sighs> kind of blow that out. We're going to set this back in here. Oh wait, is that? No, it's not the one I had cut. So we just pop the one out from the top and literally take it out of the top and set it right back down in there. Put it back together, thumb screw it down. Make sure it's good and seated because if it's not seated, it will cut it at an angle. Let's do this again, get it in there. You can feel when it goes all the way through. Okay. Pop it out. And now we've got two equal thin slices there. And then we still have some cork left over. So we could continue cutting this, but I think you guys get the picture. So now we've got two pieces here. And then because there's a little bit of cork dust and stuff on it, I drop down to a finer sandpaper. This is our very fine, which is 320. So I just use 320 and just kind of roll it around a little. This will clean it up there so it's nice and clean on that side. So, cleaned up, the edges are smooth, everything's nice. I'll just do this other one here, just to make Nick chase me around with a zoom camera. <laughs> Sometimes, if you are sliding it this way or this way, you can actually get it uneven. So if you take it and you actually do a figure eight on the sandpaper, you're kind of equally hitting all sides. So you can get to a point where you can do a figure eight pretty quick. It just helps it. And then there you go. So cool. Now those rings are ready to go into your grip and go on the mandrel. Cool. So that is that. Now if uh, I'll show you real quick since I have this. If you want to do anything else, it's the same, it's the same deal. 
Take your EVA block, if it's right in there perfect, cut it just as you would anything else. So whether it's the EVA block, your composite cork, your burl stuff, it's all going to fit right in that slicer. Very cool. Sweet. All right. Let's see if we have any questions. Yeah. Do we have any questions there? Bum, 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 bum. Mm. Keep going down there, Jay. Keep going down there. All right. Cool. So, since we have put all that together, you want to go ahead and talk about how we're going to put these on. We need to prep this mandrel, and we need to do that stuff. How about yeah. that? Let's do that. Cool. All right. So, I have here the quarter-inch mandrel. Now, if you notice, this is the inner diameter of the EVA. The EVA comes in, what, 3 eighths? Half and 5 eighths. Half and 5 eighths. So, when you're doing EVA, you're not ever going to use your quarter-inch mandrel. So, when you buy the one kit, though, you get all four sizes. So, the, the quarter-inch handles all your cork because I would venture to say what 99% of all cork rings <laughs> are going to be a quarter inch hole yes right you're right I mean there's there's a couple floating around out there that are like maybe 300 or, or something like that and we do have some large cork rings correct that have like a <clears throat> 350 or a 500 inside mm -hmm. that guys are using on offshore rods or just you know big musky blanks and things like that yep. but in general you're going to be looking at a quarter inch ring. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the turning mandrel wax. So it's really very simple. You can use the uh, RBS Pro if you want, or you can actually just take a paper towel. You're going to put a little, put a little wax on here. You don't need a ton of it. Okay. And we're just going to coat it. And it will help, you know, clean it a little bit. But you're going to put a thin, thin layer of wax on it. And then I'm going to let it dry and use it from there. All right, that works right there. So the reason being behind that is I'm going to show you guys how to glue the cork rings together. Did I leave? I meant to get. So this is the four inch dish. That's what I usually mix epoxy in. Sometimes we also use the plastic ones or you just cut the box that all your products come yeah, in. Yeah, anything you got. So, cool. Uh, there was a good question. Um, why not use epoxy uh, for the glue up? Um, so, I'm guessing you're referring to the, the individual little wedge slices. Um, you certainly could, and that's actually what, Chris, I think you used pro paste when you glued your little yeah. pie pieces together. The only reason I did is just because I had it. Yeah, like, you, you certainly can. The reason I typically use the wood glue is it cleans up a little bit easier. And the, the other half of that is when you're doing the, the individual little wedge pieces and you know reshaping to a, a cork ring, you really don't need Pro Pace, um, like the, the superior bond of Pro Pace, I guess you could say. You just really need to, to get these to hold together. That's all the goal is. Now, right. when you go to actually glue these cork rings, you know, together and make a grip out of them, you're going to be using Pro Pace for that. And that's where your bond really comes in. Exactly. Um, I just like the wood glue. It's easier to work with. It's, it's faster. It, it's, uh, I don't know, just my preference. And we, you know, use it in these cork creation kits. Um, so I just feel like it's a, it's a better option, but there's nothing wrong with using pro paste for that either. We use it for a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. So we are going to, just going to mix a small little bit. Of course, the pro paste is a 50, 50 mixture, but don't worry. It doesn't have to be for those that haven't used it. Uh, it doesn't have to be like pro coat, thread master, any rod finish. Yeah. Yeah, it needs to be 50-50, but it doesn't need to be nearly as exact as your finishes. Whoop. Okay. 
I know, right? Okay, get away um, from us. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Kelly's got a question. I have been doing complete <clears throat> handles with a rubberized cork, using it as a counterbalance on 13-foot float rods. Can I use the RBS Pro to turn it, or will it be too heavy for the machine? Uh, Kelly, no. Definitely use the RBS Pro. Um, and, if you have not yet, definitely pick up some of the new uh, Pro stands that we have, yep. which Chris will show in, in a few minutes. Yep. Um, the Pro stands in conjunction with your RBS Pro is probably one of the best units out there on the market. Um, it can handle almost any handle or material or anything you want to throw at it. Pretty much. So. Absolutely. Now, what, whoa, what I always try to do when I am setting up a cork grip is, and we talk about this, you know, with it dry fitting something, you know, whether it's, whether it's cork handles, whether it is uh, your reel seat and your grips and such. So you can do this really any way you want to do it. Honestly, what you're going to do to do the checkerboard is you're just going to offset these here. So you'll put a light on the top over a dark. And just depending on what, uh, how many rings you have is what's really going to make it pop based on how tall this is, right? There's no right or wrong answer. There could be, you know, 10 of them. There could be two of them. You could do a thick one in the middle of two thin ones for whatever reason that you want to do. Like this, Ooh. right? So we got something like this, you know? Sometimes it looks cool and then when you block in with solids, you can do like this. You don't have to, but you know. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do, right? So we'll do that, but what I'm gonna do is I like to set up my cork rings, you know, kind of almost stack them like chips. So you know that you don't have like five on one side and then this and then four on the other side and now it's glued and now it's out of balance and uh, you know. So I'm gonna use that piece, which is just the burl with the burnt on the outside. I'm gonna use those and then I'm gonna stack those in the center like that. So when you go through it, that's how you do it. I'm gonna do this just really quickly, just to show you how you glue the cork rings. Now, we have a prepped mandrel. I take the first ring, and I'm gonna slide the first ring on like this, okay? There's no glue on this ring yet, okay? So what I do, first ring's on, I take a little bit of pro-paste, and when I say a little bit, that right there is probably too much. See that guy right there? Probably too much. But if you know, and I'll show you how I'm going to work this. So I take that piece there, and I actually work away from the mandrel. And I am technically just, in a sense, wetting the cork. And you can see there's a tiny little ring around that mandrel where there is no pro paste. You can just barely see on the color change there I tried to leave. So you can see it right there. And it goes all the way around that ring. And that is just because you don't want to glue every single ring to this mandrel. Yep. So then what we're going to do is you've got that one on. You're good to go. I take the next one and I, I do this all in this hand. I take the next one and I hold it like this. Now I'm actually going to add that pro paste to it and I'm going to work it around, keeping the glue away from where it's going to slide down the mandrel. So there we go there. And you can see there's just, I'm going to show you in the light, there's just a sheen of it. It's almost like it's just barely wet with a little bit of ring there in the center. So I take this, and I'm going to go right to the mandrel, slide it down. Notice 
It's not wiping pro paste all the way down this. I'm going to get the cork ring here and I take it and I typically spin them to get very nice even coverage. So there we go. Now we got that. Still holding in my left hand, I'm going to take a little bit more. Do the same thing again. Right? Walk it around. Because remember, there's probably a good chance that you're going to be reaming out at least a quarter of the cork. So that cork in there that doesn't have glue on it, it really doesn't matter yeah. because it's going to be gone anyway. Now, granted, imagine there being four or five rings here. I'm going to throw in one of Hunter's specialties here. It is a little thinner. It's a little bit tougher to hold. You'll do it. Same thing. Put it on. Just barely wet it. We're going to come down. And since Hunter had sized it to the mandrel before, fits nicely. And then I put it on there and I spin it. And that's the first one. So I'll do one more here real quick so you can see the, the pattern. So I'm going to take the thicker one, put it on there. And two, these rings won't be like all perfectly flush because some of them have little high spots in them. Hunter, I was bragging on you. Uh oh, this one's got a little. It's hard to get them perfect every time. Every time, right? But. Just use your pick. Yep, easy fix. It just looked like there was a little tiny spot of glue there, honestly. All right. Slide it down. We turn it, and then we need to align it. So there you go. So that's the making of your checkerboard. There it is. Awesome. All right, cool. So you would just continue that all the way out. Then once it's out, you are going to be, let me set this over here so we don't come back tomorrow and it's permanently glued to the table. <laughs> Hand me that one over there that's finished, please. All right, so this is kind of, sort of, what you're going to be left with, depending on the pattern, depending on which ones you use and how you use it. So it'll look like this on the mandrel. This one has been sanded slightly, just so you could see it a little cleaner than when it's not sanded. This is what it looks like when it's not sanded. So it looks a little rough. You can see the glue lines and such. Not that big of a deal. But I'll show you guys kind of how to start the sanding process here in just a second. So. Once you get, though, once you get all of the pieces, will you uh, pull that deluxe handle clamp out for yep. me? I'm going to pull these off in here. All right, so tell the people about that and how all the pieces there yeah, fit together. So the deluxe handle clamp, it's going to come with... Um, the main bottom portion, right? And then we also have these, these four disc inserts. Now, depending on what, uh, what size rod blank you're going to be using, um, you know, like for instance, this one, this size is actually closed. Um, and then you have, you know, varying sizes for each disc. Yeah. Depending on, you know, the size of your rod blank and whether, just how you want to use it. Yep. And of course, these can easily just pop off, just like that. Perfect. And of course, you only just need to use one of the four. Yeah, exactly. So let me see that guy. Which one you want? So like you were saying, we'll pull all the ones off. Now, since we are using a quarter inch mandrel, there is the, the one with a quarter inch hole in the center of it that helps keep everything centered. So you would actually take it and put it back on the bungee here. All right, we're live. 
snap that in. And then it does have a hole in the bottom of the bottom piece there. So the mandrel does go through it. So if this was wet and ready to be glued, that actually slides into there. And if you notice, it's not tight, right? So if that's the case, you would actually take, snug this down a little, and just tie a new knot, OK? Tie a new knot in the elastic. And now you've shortened it, right? So let's try that, see where that comes in at. Cool. Nice. So now it's nice and snug. The bands are off of the glue there. The mandrel's out the bottom. And you can take and just set this aside. Yeah. Cool. Keeps it nice and compact. And you don't have to worry about coming back the next day and, you know, maybe yeah. your cork ring separator right. eliminates that. Yeah, exactly. Now, the other really, really good thing about this is you can do it on a fishing rod. So we actually took cork rings, and then we took EVA, and we sliced the cork rings to match this CRB light blue seat to this EVA. And then we glued it all together, seats glued, got a foregrip here. And because the uh, rod blank is you know, close to 3 eighths, it's, it's in between you know, a quarter and 3 eighths. So instead of using this tiny little one here, we actually just stepped it up to that one. And then as you can see there, it goes right on the rod blank. But it still has the cutout so that, make sure I don't hit anything, <laughs> so that when we're ready to pull this off, comes right off there, comes right out. And then this is ready to go in your RBS Pro. I've got a composite butt cap here on it. And then all we'll do is we'll just turn it down. If you want to shape it, if you want to you know, just leave it straight, uh, you'll need to shape your, your top piece here. And, uh, and you're ready to rock. So that's the good thing. I'm all in your lights here, Jay. I'm sorry, bud. Um, so that's the good thing about this clamp system is you can use it when it's on a rod and you honestly do it the same way but you do have to ream the cork before you slide it on that's how right. i do it mm -hmm. so what you would do is you would dry fit everything you would just ream it to fit snug take the next one ream it and do like that and then you just back all the cork rings up here and then you just do them one at a time and then they're ready to go into your handle clamp they're already glued on here, so we took care of gluing the cork rings together and gluing them to the rod blank all in one motion. So you honestly do it the same way you do it on the mandrel, but now we're on a rod blank, and then you're just ready to turn it. Yeah. I like this way also because you, you've already incorporated your reel seat, yes. and when you go to shape those grips, it, with the reel seat there it just gives you a better feel and gives you a, it's yeah. easier to achieve the look you're going yeah, for. Yeah, you know how far to like carry it down, you yeah. know, you don't over ream it and then go, oh no, now exactly. it doesn't mate up with the real seat. Mm -hmm. Or you ream it and then you dry fit it and you go, oh, I gotta do, yep. gotta, I gotta ream some more. Yep. So, cool. cool. All right, well, well let's give something away yep. and then we'll take this over the RBS Pro. Sweet. All right, so giveaway number two for the night is going to be our ultimate cork inlay creation kit, which has the four uh, aluminum cork jigs, all of the supplies that we used earlier, the zip ties, the glue, the cork rings, all that good stuff. Um, from YouTube, Doug Scott. Doug Scott, congratulations. You got the ultimate cork inlay creation kit. Sweet. That's a good one, great prize. Absolutely. All right, so you're gonna show us, we're gonna switch over to the other table. Yep, I'm gonna go over to the turn table. The turn and table. That's it. All <laughs> right, so um, you are gonna have to knock down you know, there's, there's pro paste hanging out all these joints. So you don't always need to use all the different grits of sandpaper we have, but for this one, I do use the 80 to start. It starts knocking it down. And then you go from 80 to the 120, which is this one. And then of course you'll finish with this. Now, 
you know, that's not, don't take it as the gospel. If, if you have different sandpaper grits at the house that you want to use, you know, don't, don't. Doesn't have to be exactly those. Exactly. It doesn't have to be those numbers. But you do need to kind of progress from a yeah. pretty high grit um, or a low grit, I guess. You, right, a you coarse can, grit. A yep. coarser grit to, to a, a finer, finer grit. Yeah, for sure. All right. So let's come with me. Okay. Oh, and actually, will you hand me that uh, like half inch tape so I can put a little on this mandel? Is it under the table? No, it's up there by my cup. Oh, duh. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So I'm merely putting some tape on the end of this mandrel so that I don't have to change the feet on this uh, RBS Pro and then just change them back for when we work on it. As you guys can see, the this is the Pro stand, the uh, CRB Pro roller stand that we were talking about earlier. Um, got the ball bearing wheels. If you guys have the RBS Pro with the track, you have to get these roller stands. It's a must. And of course, the quick turn knobs there, I just adjusted the T-bolts and I'm just gonna slide it and bring it in a little closer. They lock in real nice like that. And then I just like to make sure that that's level. I'm gonna tighten these up here. Make sure everything's good. Got the power. Pretty nice, pretty, pretty nice. I usually use my right foot for the pedal when I have it spun around correctly. So there we go. You know it's gonna turn away from us, so we're gonna do a little safety first here. All right, I'm gonna step over here. Yeah, right, <laughs> get out of here. Use a face shield because I have, if you catch a piece of, uh, if you catch a piece of cork or composite cork or this hard pro paste coming off here, it's going to make for a bad day. So let's try not to do that. Whoa. Whoa. Uh -oh. Well, you got to lock it first, Chris. Of course, this one has such a nice fit. There we go. And that's why we do it live. So what we're gonna do is, you see here, I'm just knocking off this glue. As we move up and down this, that's all that's gonna do. So we're gonna use 80. Fold it over, sometimes kind of keep it clean. You can see we're starting to knock the glue down a little. Some of these, that's on me. That's just a thicker glue line. But once you pull the pieces off or you sand them off, you can see that there's not a glue line. It's just too much on the outside. And all that was, all that was <clears throat> is because I didn't come in and clean the glue once you compress it and all the glue comes out. You can actually come in and make your life a little easier by wiping that ex excess glue off, um, but I didn't do that here. So I've knocked off almost all of that. So I get, I get away from the 80 pretty quickly.
because it, it beats up your cork um, without, without smoothing it, if that's, you know, the right terms, I guess. So let me hit this real quick. I won't be much longer. Just so they can see it come together. You can see it there. It's really starting to clean up pretty nice. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. So. And so you'd, you'd continue with, oh, yeah, knock right, it off. Throwing the masks around. So what did you have here? You had. That was the, the 120. 120. So I would continue with the 120 for a little bit now. And so. you'd use that to kind of hit your contours uh -huh. around the edges. And yep. then yep. once that's done, then I, then I go to uh, the light 320. 320. But, you know, if you wanted to jump in there with 240 or whatever in between, you can do that. But I do like the one, uh, I do like the 120. It seems like it's a good mix between, it can take care of some of the excess glue while not like chewing away at the cork. Yeah. So it, it seems like the 80 sometimes like chews it just a little too much, but. So there you go. Cool. Cool. All right. And you can see I had this thing, this thing was humming. Wide open. I had it to the floor. Yeah. So it'll handle anybody that's curious about like, well, can you turn cork on it? Yeah. Not only can you turn cork, but we are knocking off pro pace glue lines on it. So if it'll do that, it'll certainly take care of your grips. Absolutely. So, yep. Cool. And we're going to be giving away Yeah. one of these or maybe even both of them. Yeah, we might do both of them. I might, I might even do something a little, a little more, you know, do something a little fancier. Okay. We'll see. We shall see. So awesome. All right. Uh, the big giveaway. You're gonna, you're gonna give something else away. Let's are we it. forgetting anything? We're not forgetting anything, are we, guys? I think everything looks pretty clean, right? We can, um, do we have? Some, do, uh, you want to do some questions real quick? Let's do a couple questions yeah. first. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Ron has got a great question. Would you recommend using rod finish over the cork um, or cork sealer, or can you do both? Um, so Ron, you can definitely do both. So with cork being a natural product, uh, you know, probably everyone's been there. You get a, a rod with a, a cork grip over time, several years, mm -hmm. five years, it's gonna kind of degrade a little bit. It's gonna have more voids. Um, it might have little chips, little imper more imperfections, right? Yep. So cork sealer, um, after you have a finished grip is a great idea to kind of seal that, lock it in, um, and it, it prevents dirt and grime and fish mm -hmm. slime and any kind of, you know, any kind of uh, anything that's going to like break it down over time. Yep, right? absolutely. It's going to preserve that cork. For sure. Um, and then if you wanted to, you can certainly apply, um, you know, pro coat or any rod finish over the top of this cork. Mm -hmm. Now, um, a lot of people that use cork like it for a reason, like it because of the feel. Yep. The touch. If you apply, uh, you know, thread epoxy over top of this, it's gonna change the effect. You're gonna have a little bit more of a slick finish. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be different, obviously, than just the natural state of the cork. So, depends on what you're going for, personal preference. Yep. But you can definitely do both or um, or one or the other. Yep. If you if you apply, um, if you plan on applying thread finish on top of this, there's really no reason to apply cork sealer. Correct. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I would just do finish. Yeah. Because you're gonna you're essentially gonna be sealing this way better with thread finish than you would cork sealer. Exactly. Um, but if you if you do have a very nice cork grip, um, if you want to seal it with cork sealer, that's uh, definitely a great idea. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and Michael, that is gonna also kind of take care of your question there. Can you marble over cork? You absolutely can. You just if you use too much of the marbling, you're gonna completely cover the cork. Um, 
and that's okay if, if that's what you want. You know, the cork is very light, it will give you a very light base to then marble over, or you could do some marbling where you could see through the thread finish a little bit with a little bit of marbling and kind of do a mix there. So, uh, Mark Fink, hey guys, with the slicing jig, can you adjust for different thicknesses of cork slices? Technically, you can. Um, with these, the little inserts that Hunter was talking about, um, so I would have to say, do we have calipers? Calipers, I was looking for them earlier. I did not see them. Yeah. Um, we can get you the measurement, the depth of this, and the thickness that this produces for a cork ring. You can also use the insert to then cut it in half. So not only can you do that thickness, you can use the insert to then cut it in half, which will give you a pretty thin slice. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a, a really, really thin slice. So then that way you have, um, and I want to say that, I don't even know if I'm going to say it because I don't know, I don't think it's right. But <laughs> it, it's almost like the depth of this is going to be half of, you know, the quarter inch width of a ring. So if you take a quarter inch ring, this will cut it in half, I believe. Ish. I Close. don't know yeah. if it's truly an eighth of an inch or not, but it might be. And then this will take you to a sixteenth. Again, hopefully I didn't just, uh, you know, put my foot in my mouth on that one. But definitely shoot us a message uh, to Facebook if you are on Facebook or send us an email in and let us get you an exact measurement on this. I thought I had calipers here and I apologize I don't. So. Um, Don Lewis, will cork adhere to wood like cherry, oak, or maple? <sighs> Great question. Mm -hmm. I want to say yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, we've seen a lot of really, really nice custom rods with cork um, accented with wood. Absolutely. And it looks incredible, especially, although I'm not a huge fan of it, when you do apply uh, thread finish to cork and then over, you know, do a transition to the wood as well. Yep. The wood with the... Um, the, the Pro Coat or Threadmaster, whatever thread finish you want to use, right. looks incredible. Now, I will say, though, a word of caution. Uh, cork will sand way faster than any of the hardwoods that you had mentioned. So it's one of those deals where just, just be prepared and be very cautious when you're sanding the entire grip. If there is cork in there somewhere, it's going to sand... 10, 20, I mean 50 times, I don't know how many times faster, but you could really sand cork away from that wood way, way faster than that wood is gonna sand away from that cork. So yeah. definitely just have that in mind when you're playing with this. But it sounds like a great idea. I'm sure it will produce incredible product. Just, just be aware of that. So, yep. All right, I think we're time. it's time for the grand prize. Yeah. What do you think? All right. Why not? So tonight, grand prize is a CRB uh, fly rod multi-option kit. Yep. And of course, we're going to throw in uh, at least one of the, the custom grips that uh, Chris showed earlier. Um, that winner is from Facebook, Cameron Bray. Sweet. Cameron Bray, congratulations. You have a CRB fly rod multi-option kit headed your way. Five weight. Five weight. Pretty sweet. Pretty, pretty sweet. So yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to dress up another one of these cork grips, and uh, that's what we'll send you. So some fun, you know, yeah. something that we uh, that we'll produce here, kind of using all the techniques. We'll uh, you know give you something that you can use on that new CRB five weight because that is a really really nice. Really nice. So yep. uh, real quick, Lee, can cork be stained? It can. Uh, you just have to understand that when you stain wood, you get a much more uniform stain. When you stain cork, y you have situations where because there's voids in it, because there's pits in it, um, it's going to absorb the stain at different rates. Mm -hmm. So just, just be prepared that if you stain a bunch of cork rings, you might not get 14 cork rings for a seven inch grip and they're all going to look identical. So just be prepared 
Just be prepared for that. Yep. And you can also fill in some of these voids. Mm -hmm. You know, you can use the wood glue or there's plenty of other products. But, you know, if a cork ring has a larger void, especially on the edge, you can actually, you know, when this, basically before you go to turn it, you can fill in some of these gaps, um, let the product dry, whatever you're using, and then um, essentially it just acts as like almost glue fills in those voids. You might have a little bit over top and you can just sand that down just like if it was excess glue. Yeah, so. absolutely. Sweet, all right. Well, we didn't keep everybody too late. No. Hopefully we uh, got to your questions on live. If we didn't, we do go back and we have a look at those that we may have missed and we answer them to the best of our ability. And if we can't answer them, we will certainly find the answer for you. So um, real quick, Justin asks, what MHX or CRB blank would be a good jerkbait rod? Justin, we're using the out of the Mag XF lineup of MHX. I really like, you know, none of the CRB blanks really have an extra fast. I, and I know you do too, use the Mag XF. And depending on what jerkbait you're throwing, if you're throwing something like a pointer that's smaller, I would throw uh, the MB812 XF. Got it. And if you're throwing something a little bit larger, uh, like the Vision 110, mm -hmm. uh, if you're into spending $29 on a jerkbait, which I'm not gonna lie, I have a couple of them and they're worth it. But if you're throwing a Vision 110, sometimes we go to the MB813. So that's 81 inches, three power. The other one was 81 inches, a two power. So that one is MB813 XF for like a Vision 110 because it's a little bit bigger. But if you're using like a pointer and it's only like the 90 millimeter one, mm -hmm. uh, use the two just because it's not as heavy. You know, it doesn't have that like internal weight system that uh, the Mega Bass one has. Yeah. So, all right. Now, before we get out of here though, since you're leaving us, run over to the Mud Hole website because you're going to see the St. Patty's Day sale is live. 20% off orders of $200 or more. And we've got a code for you. That is STPAT20. So that's going to give you 20% off orders of $200 or more. And of course, that's why you watch these shows. That's why you're a member of the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop, because you get a first crack at the St. Paddy's deal uh, before you guys go and drink all that green beer. <laughs> Put your credit card out there. Let's get to shopping. You know, shop before you drink so you don't make any mistakes. Yep. So, And uh, as we talked about earlier on the show, the photo contest ended yesterday. The top uh, three finalists are live in the Mud Hole Lives Rod Builders Workshop. Yep. Uh, you can vote on those until... 23rd. 23rd. At midnight. At midnight. Perfect. Um, some great, uh, some great finalists there. Super that, cool. That's it. And of course, as I mentioned, the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop. If you're not a member, you're missing out. Yep. Thankfully, you're here though. But go join that as well. And all of the products that we used on the show tonight, you can go and see them all together at mudhole.com. And that is www.mudhole.com slash MHL for my whole life. Perfect. So, yep, run over to the uh, homepage there and then slash MHL, and that will just give you everything that we use tonight. You'll just be able to quick access it, boom, 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 fill that cart, go to checkout, and uh, that's it, so. Yep, and use that promo code, 20% off, orders over $200, S-T-P-A-T-2-0. Yep, absolutely. All right, is that it? That's it. I think that's it. Let's get out of here. We got some hot pockets and pizza to eat. So uh, we had Taylor and Guffy in the war room tonight. Steve was in there. Brooke was probably in there answering questions. He's a big help as always. And then, of course, on the ones and twos, we had Jay and Nikki Mintz. Hunter McCamey is my left-hand man. I'm Chris Adams. We'll see you in three weeks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys. <laughs> Have a good one.